Hey everyone, and welcome back to Art à la carte. In this video, I thought I would give you a Copic tour and show you all the different Copic markers that I currently own in my collection. The reason I wanted to do this is one, I love seeing what Copic markers other artists have and which ones they prefer to use on things. And I'll show you how I kind of keep a mark of that on my list. I often receive comments from you guys asking which Copic markers do I use in different drawings. So I thought it would be fun just to show them all to you. So the first thing in the Copic tour I wanna to show you is my my Copic coloring chart. So I'll try to remember to put a link to where I found this one in the description box below so you can go check it out. But it has, it comes blank, obviously. And for those of you who are kind of new to Copic markers, they're set up not, I mean, they have names, but they're assigned a letter and a number and it'll let you know which marker it is. So each letter in the Copic chart is a color family and then the number lets you know the saturation or hue of that. So the color families that we have are the BV, which is blue violet. We have violet, we have red violet, we have red, we have yellow red, we have yellow, we have yellow green, we have green, we have blue green, we have blue, which takes up two chart spots. And then we have E, which I'm not exactly sure what E stands for, maybe earth tones. If you know, you can let me know in the comment section below. And then we have our gray tones, which we have a cool. Then we have the T, which I think stands for toner tones. We have N, which stands for neutral. And we have W, which stands for warm. And then we have the F, which I think stands fluorescence, which I don't have any of those, so I'm not positive. And then we have this one down here, which has all the different blacks. So as you collect your different markers, you just fill in the boxes. Now what I do, and you're gonna see as I begin showing you this chart, is some of them have, I put little dots next to. And these are when I'm watching another artist create a piece and they're using a color that I really, really like. I'll put a little mark in the box. That way if I see a sale going online for markers or if I go someplace they're selling the markers, I can remember which ones I really want first. Be, I mean, because eventually you're gonna to wanna to go full Pokemon trainer and gotta catch them all, but you wanna get your favorites first. So I use this kind of little case here. It wasn't actually a Copic case. It's actually like a letter filer. Um, it has a bell separation in the middle there. When I first bought this, I just had enough to fill up one space and then I just put some random things here and then slowly began to be able to fill up both spaces. And now, as you can see, I probably can fit maybe one or two markers in each side and I am full. So I'm gonna have to find a different solution for this. But I just decorate it, put my little stickers on there. Get your own Mochi sticker at redbubble.com. Link is in the description box below. Shameless promotion. So the first family group I'm gonna start off with is Blue Violet, which up till just recently, I didn't have any markers from this family. And the two that I have from this family is BV23, which is grayish lavender, and BV25, which is grayish violet. And these are really nice, kind of, they're, as they say, they're a very gray toned. So this one's really dark, and this one's just a little bit lighter. And I like to use these for really dark shadows. So the next family group is just the plain violet, which I have a few more in the violets. So the first three that I bought were these three. So looking at this chart, if you want your Copic markers to really perform the best they possibly can for you, you want to get ones that are close together because that means they're gonna blend well. So I got these three were one of my very first markers that I got. So first is V20, which is Wisteria. Then I have V22, which is Ash Lavender, and V25, which is Pale Blackberry. And these ones also I like to use for shading and highlighting as well. These work great for shading with skin tones. Sometimes with skin tones you don't want just to go with a darker brown, you want to add a nice contrast and this really cools everything down. So I use this marker so much that this was actually one of the first refills that I bought. The next three that I have in the violet section are VO4, which is lilac, VO9, which is just violet, and V12, which is out of focus, <laughs> which is pale lilac. And you're gonna see a vast difference in tones with these. So there's a much warmer tone with all of these. So that's actually V12 I just did. This is V04 and V09. So as you can see, much brighter tones with these. So I wouldn't use these so much for highlighting as these. These now make these look gray. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the 
red of violet family. So this is going to the more magenta. It's not purple. It's not red. It's somewhere in between. I've got a lot of really cool pinks in this one as well. So the first one that I have is an RV000, which is evening, which is called evening primrose, and it's really, really faint. Once that, the darkness that you see there is just because um, it's wet through the paper and it's picking up like the color behind it. But once it fully dries, it's just this very soft pink, which I absolutely adore. One would think you wouldn't have a need for something so light. I use this one a lot. In fact, I'm going to be getting a refill for this one so I can have it on hand because I use this for any kind of soft highlight that I want. If I have a a character that has something white on them and I want to give it a little bit of a shadow, I'll use this for the shadow. Next one is RV11, which is pink. So this one is definitely much darker. I don't know how well tone-wise this is. My camera's kind of picking up a lot of grays right now, but this is just a nice soft little pink. The next is a series of four that I have. So these ones blend really well together. So they are RV21, which is light pink, RV23, which is pure pink, RV25, which is dog rose flower, and RV29, which is crimson. So you can see how these three colors just blend really well together. In fact, if I go back in with my lighter shade and just kind of flush over all of them, you see, so you can see how you get this awesome gradient effect. The last one I have in this set is an RV69. Now, just because you don't have one that's near the family doesn't mean you can't use it. So this one is very dark. Um, but I actually I like to use this one also in shadows or if I want something very, very dark. I love this shade. So this one is Peony. So the next family group that I have is my red family. So the first one I have, and again, I use this one a lot, which is R00, which is a pinkish white. So it gives me a nice kind of pinkish tan color, which is great for skin tones. Next, I have R02, which is rose salmon. This has a little bit more of a salmon color, hence the name salmon in it. So this one here is another one that kind of stands on its own, which is R08 Vermilion. Which is a very nice warm red. Then there's these four here, which really go well together, which is R11, which is pale cherry pink. R12, which is a light tea rose. R14, which is light rouge, and R17, which is a lipstick orange. Okay, so you can see these ones have a much redder blend to them, but they gradient fairly well together. Next, I have R20, which is a blush, which again, I love this shade here for making blushes. Then we have R22, which is light prawn. I love this shade. It used to be my favorite of my pinks. R32, which is peach. Then there's R43, and I don't know how to pronounce the name of that. I'm not even gonna try, but this is my favorite pink. I love that color of pink. And then we have R81, which is rose pink, and I use this one a lot too because it's just a soft pastel-y pink color, and I love it. So those are my markers in my R family. So next up is the yellow red family group, and these are gonna have some more skin tones and then moving into your oranges. So these two, which are YR00, which is powder pink, and YR01, which is peach puff. Again, I use for skin tones. So we have this one. These are getting into more of the orangey skin tones, which are great, I love these. Then I have my two orange twins, which are YR16, which is apricot, and YR04, which is chrome orange. And these are definitely my two orangey guys. So I have that orange. And these two guys are pretty similar in tone. Had I realized that they were this close in tone together, I probably would have waited on one of them. There are differences in these, but it is so small that I would rather have picked another color that had a little bit more of a difference before I match these up. Sometimes there's a little bit more difference on the sample cards and when you get it, you're like, wow, that's really the same. So this one here is just a little bit lighter than this one over here. Okay, then I have these three guys. They're not super close to each other, but they work beautifully together. 
and they are YR12, which is Loquat, Loquat, I don't know, YR21, which is Cream, and YR24 Pale Sepia. So a nice kind of brownish orange, kind of a yellowish orange, and a kind of golden orange. And these, again, I love using as skin tones. Also really great for getting kind of that fall colors if you want. Now, if you're following along in the chart, the next row is going to be your yellows, but I don't follow the rules. I actually put my browns next to this just because they flow better in my my scheme of things. So I have a ton of browns in all different shades. So let's get into it. I'll put them right over here. So the first one I have up is my E0000, which is a floral white. And again, like that pink that's right there, this one is super pale so you'll see this the darkness that you're seeing right now is just because it's wet when it dries it dries almost white and again you think why would one someone want to have this one i use this one a ton because sometimes you just want that really subtle look to it speaking of ones that i use the most e00 i use a ton and i do have a refill for that one i love this one i use it in any kind of skin tones that i do whether I'm using it for shading for lighter skin or I use it as highlight for darker skin tones, love E00. He's E07, which is light mahogany, and he is not light. He is this great kind of reddish brown. E09, which is burnt sienna, which is very similar tone, so these ones blend really great together. So then I have this triple pair, which blend really well together. So there is E11, which is barley beige, E13, which is light suntan, and E15, which is dark suntan. So again, a really great gradient. Great gradient? Great gradient! So we have copper, which is, I don't know, this doesn't look like copper color to me. Maybe, I guess it does look like a penny. And then we have these two guys, which are E27, milk chocolate, yum, makes me hungry. And E29, which is burnt umber. Look at that chocolate color. Next is like smeared chocolate. And this one just has a little bit more red to it. Okay, so we're gonna lighten up again and we're gonna go with these two guys, which is E31, which is a brick beige, and an E33, which is sand. And I use these guys a lot as well in skin tones. So now we're getting more into the olive complexions and then a little bit warmer. Now we're gonna go really dark again with an E39, which is leather. Which isn't as dark as these guys, but a nice, good brown. And next we're going to lighten up super light once again with an E40, which is brick white, and an E50, which is eggshell white. And again, these ones are those ones that are super light. I love them. So the eggshell white has a little bit of a warmer tone where the brick white has a cooler tone. One of my newest markers that I got, I got this E71, which is champagne. And this is kind of just a gray brown and I really like it. This one I use a lot in skin tones as well and it is E30, no, this one is E93, which is tea rose. And that one's really pretty. It's just got a hint of pink in the brown. Then my last two in my E families is E, E97, which is deep orange, and E99, baked clay. So there's the baked clay. And that one is the deep orange. So now let's move into our yellow family. We'll put the little yellow family over on this side. So for the yellow family, starting off really light, I have Y00, which is barium yellow and Y000 yeah, is pale lemon and both of these as you probably can guess are really a light shade of yellow now this happens and it actually has happened several times already I have doubles the reason you might get doubles is I had first started off buying individually and then I found a really good deal in one of their large packs, so I bought that and so there were a few doubles on that, which is fine, um, but it's also nice just to have backup. So yeah, I have a couple, I think I have four or five markers that are doubles in here. I have Y11, which is a pale yellow, a Y13, which is a lemon yellow, a Y15, which is a cadmium yellow, and a Y18, which is a lightning yellow, which is a little dirty. There we go. 
And again, these ones blend beautifully together. So we have this one, which is kind of a pale yellow. This one is getting into a nicer yellow. Then we're getting into our deeper, richer yellow, warm, warm yellows. And finally, our nice, super dark yellow. So you can see how these four markers blend gorgeously together. Then to finish off the yellow family I have, I have this Y28, which is a gold color, which is not metallic. I really do enjoy this pen. I did not think I would like this color as much as I do, but I like that shade. The next family is the yellow green family. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room to do everybody on this page. I'm gonna have to get a separate page, but we can fit these guys on here. So for this family here, I have YG01, which is green bice, which I love this. It's a really pretty light spring green. Then I have YG03, which is yellow green. Moving down, I have a YG04, which is acid green. So this is where you're gonna get just to that nice deeper tone. I have YG23, which is New Leaf, and a YG67 Moss Green. So here are the markers in my green family. Anyway, I just got this one, and he is a Jade Green, which I love this color. This, this color is one of my favorite colors, and it's kind of sad because I have another color. I'll show you. In a it's almost exactly the same shade as the BG10. So again, I kind of wish I would have gotten a different marker because those ones are so close together. This one is G07, which is Nile Green, which again is getting nice and deep. And then I have these two, which is G16 Malachite and G17, which is Forest Green. And again, these two are almost exactly the same. So there is Malachite, and this one is Forest Green. And there's a little difference, like this one has a little bit more blue in it, and this one's a little bit darker. But, you know, they're really close together. <laughs> so then I have G20, which is a wax white, and a G21, which is lime green. And these ones go really great together. They blend beautifully. But they're just enough different that this is the kind of difference that I like. I like ones that blend together, but there is a definite difference. You're not going, in. which one is that? I can definitely tell those are two different markers, but if I work it, they'll blend seamlessly together. Then I have my super dark green, G28, which is ocean green, and it has a really nice dark tone to it. Then there is G40, which is dim green, which is very similar to these three, but enough different that it all goes together well. And my last two greens are G49, which is olive, which is grayish olive, and G99, which is regular olive. So, as you can tell, that one is a little grayer, and this one has a little bit more color to it. So these five markers are in my blue-green family. I already gave you a sample of the BG10, which is Cool Shadow. He's the one who looks a lot like the zero, G00. Then we have BG13, which is a mint green. Love this color. BG19, which is a teal blue. Also one of my favorites. And then these two, which are more of a gray base and they get nice and dark, which is BG72, Ice Ocean. I love that name. And BG78, which is bronze. So you can see nice grayer shades of, of these colors. These are great if you're doing like a winter scene and you want some really dark shadows in your snow or if you're doing like a night scene or in my underwater scene when I did um, Alluring Darkness. I used so much of these I had to go get these filled again because I just sucked all the ink out of them. This is my blue family here. So to start off the blue family I have my B000 which is a pale porcelain blue. Porcelain. 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 Which is a nice soft Sky Cloud Baby Blue. B01, which is a mint blue. I love this blue. Next we have this trio, which is B04, which is Tahitian blue. B05, which is process blue. And B06, which is peacock blue. And these ones blend beautifully together. So we have those three together. Love those ones. B14 is a light blue, but it's about the same shade as this blue. Again, one of those colors that is so similar 
to B06 that I think I would have chosen a different color to go before I got these ones because they're very, very similar. B24, which is sky. Sky. I have B28, which is royal blue, and B29, which is ultramarine. Ultra Bleh. My tongues are getting tied. These are my really nice deep royal colors. And there is enough difference in the two. This one definitely is a little bit darker. That I think those, those work really well together. Then I have B32, which is pale blue, and I use this one a ton. I'm gonna be getting a refill for this one as well. Just to shake things up, the next one is my darkest blue, which is B39, which is a Prussian blue, and I love this one too. Use this one a ton in my Luring Darkness piece. So if you want that almost black, but still blue undertone, Prussian blue. And then last for this family is this trio, and this again is some of the first markers that I got, which is B60, which is a pale blue-gray, B63, which is a light hydrangea, hydrangea, and B66 clematis. So these three blend beautifully together. They're blue, blah, blue, blah, blue, blah, blah, blue, blah. So the last ones we have to do are our grace. So first is my C family, which is the cool grays. So when I bought my cool grays, I would buy one, skip a number, get one, skip a number, because these just go progressively darker and darker and darker and darker. And so um, eventually I want to fill them all in, but I found if I skipped every other one, it was still enough, it was still close enough that I could get a good gradient with it. So C1, which is cool gray number one. And all of these all these have the name of cool gray plus their number. So cool gray one, right there. Cool gray three, right there. Cool gray five, cool gray seven, and cool gray nine, which is almost black just a nice gradient. So the in-between ones are just going to be that shade that's right in between those. So if you want to not work as hard blending these out, those in-between colors are gonna help you fill that in. Um, I can still, if I put a lot of ink into this, blend it out pretty smoothly. I only have one in the T family, which is Tone. I have this Tone Gray Zero, which again is one of those really, really light colors. That just adds my extra little shades on things that are light. I also only have one in the neutral family, which is neutral gray five. I wanted some nice cool tones and then I wanted some warm tone grays. And I pretty much did the same thing uh, with that I did with the cool grays as I did with the warm grays, except for right here, I got these two together because I really wanted that light shade. Warm gray zero. I have warm one, which this nib is really wearing out. It's a really, really soft nib. So those are those two that are right next to each other. Then I skipped one, so I went to warm three, warm five, warm seven, which is very juicy. I think I just refilled this one. And warm nine. So these are the last two color markers that I have, which are one, which are 100 black and 110 special black. And I don't know if there's even a difference with them, so let's see. These came in a pack, both together, so this is black. And this one's the special black, which is black. So I don't know why they sold these two together because they are so close that you really can't tell very much of a difference. The last two markers that I have, I won't give a demonstration for because they are just the colorless blenders um, and they're colorless, so there's nothing really to show. Um, but I did get, you'll notice that there is a difference. This is the just classic Copic marker. And so this one comes with so this one comes with a bullet nib and a chisel nib. And this is the Sketch, which is, this is the brand that I get because it comes with a chisel nib and a brush tip nib, which I use a ton. Um, and the reason that I got this one first was because when I was first buying my Copic markers set, they were out of the Sketch Color Splendor and I really wanted one, so I got this one. And I do use it, I use, uh, this is kind of my tank one, so if I really need to scrub in some color, I use this one. This is for my delicate work, and this is like, this is the Hulk. Blah. So there we go. This is the tour of all of my Copic markers. Let me just say, if you are a Copic marker artist, I would love to see your collection. So if you do a video like this where you show off all your markers, so would you please, please, please send me the link so I can see what Copic markers you have. I find this so helpful for me in buying markers, seeing what other artists have and what 
markers they really like and which ones they feel are so similar that maybe they're good ones to hold off on. If you're brand new to this channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on any future videos. And as always, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.